atrocity and terror are not political weapons. And to those who would use them, your day is over. They hated your speech, didn't they? We're afraid we won't have the guts to back it up. Air Force One clear for takeoff. Thank you for your hospitality, Josh. Oh, we Comrade, welcome to Comrade the Podcast. That's right. Comrade are we the recording? Podcast. Yeah, yeah. We were, yeah, we got all that political banner. So you can, the lady you, said we were recording. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the lady. Those uh, ladies. It is the last possible Sunday in February, so that means it is the end of President's Days. It's and the last possible Sunday? <laughs> it's, the 20, it's the 28th of February. I mean, it, it is the last possible, possible Sunday. Sunday. To be fair, every Sunday is the last possible, is possibly the last Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Thing, fingers crossed. And yeah, this right. was uh, arguably one of our worst months ever. So yeah, let's is, get into it. Is, and also yeah. probably the first month where we botched the theme almost every week. Yeah. This was the first week where we're on brand and it this, didn't help. This theme was so bad it broke our website. The, this was not. One of the worst, like this is one, maybe one of the worst months, but I feel like what's fairly worse? recently we had a much worse month. What was more? What's what was worse? I what would say more, like, no, November, but we had tombstones. And but November was no. also comically. Yeah. These aren't even like comically bad. These movies are just bad. Anyway, we'll get into it. Yeah. We'll get what did everybody watch? I didn't watch shit. Hopefully, Go. hopefully, uh, by the time you all are listening to this, the website will be back up. Vinny was, uh, our, our tech guru was fixing it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I what know. happened? Do we even know? How do you think I, you don't think I didn't know? Was it the well, Russians? No. I'm pretty sure it was the Russians. I, I'm not sure. There's something, something, it's a WordPress problem, but it actually is going to be beneficial because. We're gonna. It, this isn't interesting. We're gonna move. Did they get all of our PP tapes? No, we got our PP tapes. Intact, Thank God. But we're gonna move uh, our shit to to another server. We should be able to do a lot more. Uh, as far as like our SEO is gonna be better now. So great. Okay, I was enough worried about our SEO. SEO. Enough of this. So, I don't even know I, what you're I, talking I was, about. I was I don't Anyway, uh, would y'all are we finally going to get on clownpenis.fart? We could. <laughs> we could. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, Alec, what'd you watch? I watched three things. Three things? Um, nice. First of all, I, I want to get it. I listened to the show from two weeks ago yeah, this morning on the what, way to work. All right, I finished that? it. That was the Don't Space Jam me. episode. Oh, okay. And the very last thing said on the podcast was said by TJ, and it and I quote: "Kurt Russell's in it. How bad could it be?" <laughs> yeah, well, what can I say? <laughs> TJ, who has seen Bone dying. Tomahawk? Yeah, that's true, and I hate Bone Tomahawk. Mm. I was dying listen, listen, hearing that on the way to work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when yeah, you're right, yeah. when you're right, fifty two percent of the time, you're wrong forty eight percent of the time. <laughs> Um, I watched three things. One, three was things? Like, one isn't even like a real movie. It's called Ride Sweet, Die Slow. What? What was that? I think Sean's bird escaped or something in the background. Yeah, I'm having animal <laughs> issues. Stand by. <laughs> what was it called? It's called Ride Sweet, Die Slow. You're dead. And it's a uh, a genre that we we stumbled on. I think on maybe on the Roku channel. I forget. <laughs> But it uh, it's a western, Ooh. 
It's a genre of movie I didn't know existed of black lady westerns. Oh. All right. And uh, this movie I is... I don't think I've ever seen a black lady western. This movie is terrible. It's barely, <laughs> like, it's barely a movie. Like, nobody is an actor in it. It's just, like, something they, like, cobbled together. Is it, like, like it was... posse for girls? Wouldn't that just be called pussy? <laughs> God, it's not even funny. Don't laugh uh, at that. You liked it. You liked um, it. I guess, kind of. But it's literally made on, like, hand cams. And they, it's not even, like, phones. Oof. It's, like, just, like, actual, like, like the camera I used to have. Yeah. Or is it, like, more akin to a, a set-it-off type black girl movie? Uh, probably that. More okay. than Posse. Um, there's nobody in it with any, like, of any name. One of the one of the women in it was in, has been in three real movies, and the rest of her career has been bondage and foot fetish videos. Um, and it also and uh, Raphael Sadiq is in it for like a scene from Ooh. Tony Tony Tony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is really weird. Yeah, and also Lucy Pearl like deep cut. Yeah, I, guess. I remember them. Yeah. Yeah, and he was in. Uh, he had a song. I just remember him from having a song on the Luke Cage soundtrack. I can't remember what song though. Yeah, that soundtrack that song, uh, slapped. Oh yeah, that song. Uh, what is it? Long Live the Chief by Jadena is one of the better songs I've heard in a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too bad his other songs aren't nearly as good. I never listened. Didn't want to ruin it. I listened to like one of his. He only had, had like a couple of albums. They're each like five or six songs, but yeah, that was his high water mark. Also, I told Gogs slapped. this. I don't know if I ever said it to you. That guy, Jadena, especially in that performance, looks exactly like if Calvin Candy had a daughter with one of his slaves, or a son with one of his <laughs> slaves. Like, he looks exactly like a mixed Leonardo DiCaprio. Go look at a picture of him and tell him he does not look he is a handsome, like Calvin He Candy. is a handsome man. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a fucking reference. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like filmed on like home video cameras. Like It's all outdoors because it's supposed to be like in like the west, like the backwoods, I guess, mm-hmm. and like the wind wreaks havoc with their dialogue, like something oh. like that. Oh it's, god! It's, like, like they don't have boom mics or shotgun mics. It's, it's all just like the on camera audio. It's so bad. I'm pretty. Man. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but it's it's not good. Um, watched Joel Egerton's The Gift. I like that movie. I think. I thought it was okay. It, it, it was. I feel like it was missing something. It, like I don't think he was the right person to play that role. I think he wrote it. If I yeah, he wrote it and directed it and yeah. starred in it. But he probably should have picked somebody else to star in it. It's him and Jason Bateman, right? Yeah, yeah. I oh, forget so Jason Bateman. What's the plot of that one? That's not a Richard Kelly movie. No, you're thinking of the box. Oh, the plot is that. Uh, Jason Bateman and his wife move back to LA, and then he runs into this old kid, this kid from his high school, who is a weirdo. And hijinks ensue, but they're not really hijinks. Oh, you know, it's but like I don't know. I don't, I don't think that, like horror movie kind of thing. Is it like the Strangers, like that sort of thing? No, no. Oh. It's like single white female kind of. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But I, I, I don't think Joel Edgar, like, I think with another actor in his role, it would have been better. And I don't buy Jason Bateman as a threatening presence at all. Yeah, yeah. So that was, it was hard for me to see. It was miscast. It was what miscast in a lot of I haven't movies. seen it, but I've heard he's really good in that, was that Ozark show, and he's kind of, that's real dark. I'm hearing a lot of echo. Agreed. Okay. Hey. Um, the third thing I watched was uh, Becky. Oh, oh you finally watched it? Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. I didn't think it was great or outstanding, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, um, I wanted it to be more like manic. Like, I feel like it was a little too grounded. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I wanted, yeah, I I wanted it to be like crazy hyper violent not like there's some violent outbursts but i thought i was expecting like you want like over the top 
I mean, it's yeah. pretty fucking violent. But I mean, she stabs dudes with like that <laughs> knife made of like she makes colored like, pencils and a ruler yeah. and shit. <laughs> it's pretty violent. And when that, yeah, when but like, I don't know. The way you guys talked about it, I was expecting like. God, I can't even think of a comparable like movie Mandy. Right now. Well, Mandy sucked, so no, not uh, that. Uh, Jesus. Um, I don't know. Like shoot them up. Okay. Maybe like car- more cartoonish and but still like crazy violent. What about um? What do you think about Kevin James in it? I thought he was good. He's he. I thought he was good in his role. I don't understand the ending where she has. Is she a Nazi now? Like she has like the key and she's like. Uh, holding on to it like it's like a crucial part of her life now. So she's a member of the Aryan nation. She took over Kevin James' never, role. You never find out what the key is. It's like a MacGuffin. They like never reveal. No, but the symbol on it is like the Aryan symbol, but it's or like, one of one of it, several. Are you in the like, CPAC stage? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ted Cruz spitting out his tight five about visiting Cancun. That yeah. guy's a weird shape, man. That's coming from somebody who's a weird <laughs> shape. Like, I'm a strange shape, but that guy is... That was a poorly tailored suit, Ted Cruz. The best is just Google Google Ted Cruz child affection. Anytime he tries to, like, kiss his kids, they look like they're, they're like, trying to get away from, like, the monster. It's hilarious. Yeah. There's a I mean, Zodiac they are. killer. They, so. they, literally, they literally are trying to get away from a monster. <laughs> Nice. According to the 45th president of the United States, his wife's a real pig. Yeah, and he's still, <laughs> he's still a long time, so. uh, Anything else, Al? Uh No, that's it. I'm up to date on WandaVision if anybody else is, and that show is just tremendous. So, three, so you watched the Western, Becky, what was the third one? The Gift. The Gift. The Gift. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's a very memorable film. You are, you yeah. forgot about it. I in forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've seen it and I don't remember it enough to like defend it or agree with you. Yeah, so, it was. You, it was role. okay. It was. It was like the definition of meh. Like, yeah, you just you you forget about it. Um, but everybody should be watching Wandavision. I can't say that enough. That show yeah, it's is. Good. I'm. I'm two or th- what episode are we on? I'm, I'm the next this coming week is nine. It's the last yeah. one. Holy shit! I'm I'm only through five. I got to catch up. You do because it's ridiculous, and I don't know how they're going to wrap it up, but it's going to be bonkers. I would imagine. I'm surprised that Modoc show that TJ sent the the trailer for isn't on. Is it because it's going to be like like adult, and that's why it's not going to be on Disney Plus? It's going to be on Hulu. <laughs> It was in production before Disney Plus was. Oh, uh, okay, got it. It was originally. Looks- it was originally one of like three Marvel shows that were going to be on Hulu. It looks it was- pretty funny. It looks great. Yeah, I- I'm looking forward to it. Um, and that's I- it. So, God, I I honestly don't think I watched anything. It was a shit week, and I just you don't think you watched it. I don't recall. Like, I tried to think about it. I went through my history on Amazon. Like, sometimes I put shit on and don't realize it. Yeah, I like, I, but, like, I sleepwalk movies, but no, I didn't. I don't think I saw other than, like, watching kid shit periphery, which doesn't fucking count. So I didn't see anything. So, Sean. Uh, all I watched was that Harley Quinn cartoon. I watched, like, the first season of it. It's actually really funny. Is that on HBO Max? It is, yeah. It's a lot more like, um, it's a lot. I know this sounds stupid. This it's a lot more Warner Brothers than a lot of the DC animated stuff is. It's a lot kind of more slapstick. I think Deany and Bruce Timm are involved with it. So and you mean like kind of, like like more like Bugs Bunny and less like Batman the animated series? Uh, more like Batman the animated series and also kind of Looney Tunes. But I mean, there's you know the of course there's like a ton of cursing and like super violence and shit. But the jokes are all really solid and the character models look really good. Okay. And uh, Lake Bell's a really solid Poison Ivy. Who does? I like, I like who Lake Bell. Harley Quinn's voice. Who does what? Harley Quinn's voice. Um, the chick from The Big Bang Theory. Kay- Kaylee Cuckoo? Coco? Yeah. She's actually really good, believe Kaylee it or not. Kaylee Cloaca. Yeah. <laughs> the Cloaca blooms. Um, Alan Tudyk does a million voices on there. That guy I love rules. Alan. I love Alan Tudyk. Like, there's a great bit where uh, Dr. Psycho gets dropped from the Legion of Doom because he calls Wonder Woman a cunt when they're in a fight on TV. <laughs> like, they have to disown him and he gets canceled. Like, it's really funny. 
Um, I guess they moved all of the the stuff that was on the stupid DC app now to yeah, like Dietrich Bader is doing Batman again because he did it uh, for one of the the goofier cartoons, and there's like a great even like these like not uh, perverted jokes are really good like um, he's there with Robin he's like look I made you your favorite and he's like you didn't make that Alfred did he goes well I made him make it. Is Joker in it? Yeah, yeah, he's all over it. I don't remember who does Joker. It's not Mark Hamill, but they're doing a Mark Hamill Joker. Uh, okay. But a uh, kite man's one of the main characters. Ron <laughs> Funches is King Shark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ron, Ron Funches. <laughs> oh, he's so good. And uh, Alan Tudyk is Clayface, but he does his like actor because you know he's supposed to be an actor. <laughs> okay. And they're like, uh, they're doing, they're looking, they're online looking at reviews of their crew on like whatever. Oh, because they want to join the Legion of Doom. <laughs> and uh, he's like, here's one that's good for you. It says, why doesn't, why is no one talking about Harley Quinn? I'd like to nominate her to sit on my face. Oh, I should have read that before I said it. <laughs> watch this. This, the yeah. cast is really, the cast, I'm looking at the cast right now. Christopher Christopher Maloney's apparently in it. Oh yeah, he's Gordon. <laughs> and, but, uh, but Gordon keeps calling Batman to talk about how he can't fuck his wife anymore. <laughs> And he's like, all I expect is for my friend to listen to me about how I can't satisfy my wife anymore. She's fucking somebody else. I don't blame her. <laughs> like, oh, I, I gotta check this out. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, the first episode, you know, is a setup episode. So, of course, um, that is what it is. But the, the whole show's, like, really funny and uh, kind of touching. Like, it has some heart to it, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's... Oh, well, um, what's that? Our episodes are half in our episodes. Half. Mm-hmm. JB Smoove is like a talking plant in it. <laughs> that guy's always great. I really love the show. It's like, uh, I, it's their first kind of like R rated thing that I think really works because I don't know. It's like, it's kind of sweet in, in addition to be like incredibly dumb and vulgar. Oh, my God. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, and I, you know what I figured out? We're talking about the DC animated models, and I couldn't figure out why I hated them so much. Yeah. And, like, this might be kind of a deep-cut comics thing, but you guys remember Michael Turner? Yeah. They all look like Michael Turner drawings, and especially the men, and that's just not a style I like at all. Yeah, it's like that. It's sort of like an elongated version of Jim Lee drawings. Like it's yeah, like, it's, it's very, like, wild storm, and I, like, I don't care for that at all. Mixing like Jim Lee with J. Scott Campbell or something. Yeah. See that. But no, I would definitely watch that. Like, I, I think you guys will all get a kick out of it. Like, I love it them. actually makes it makes it makes her a whole character as opposed to you know just kind of like that weird thing that uh, yeah. what's her nuts does. Yeah. Margaret Robbie is less a character and more just that voice. It's kind of it. and she's yeah. hot. That's like it. she is hot. Yeah, I'll give the her voice. That. The voice is a combination between that like bad Brooklyn accent that uh, she does and the original like uh, I forget what the woman's name is. Oh, hey, you Mr. J. Mr. No, J. Wasn't very strong. It was somebody else. Yeah. But uh, yeah, highly highly recommend that. All right, cool. Uh, who's left? Me. Uh, I watched one thing. One thing. I watched Willie's Wonderland. Oof the the Rock of Fire explosion movie. Yeah, or the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. And so, oh. I got a question. I don't Wait, understand. Wait, what? Wait, what, what? The Rock of Fire Explosion was the Chuck E. Cheese band. Yeah. Oh, okay. You Go ahead. You see the documentary? Right. Nope. Look up the Rock of Fire Explosion documentary. It's actually it's really... fucked it's up. Yeah, it's great. Um, that documentary is probably what spurned Five Nights, Five Nights at, at Freddy's. Freddy's. Um, but anyway, so I, this is what I don't understand. So we watched, we didn't watch it on the show, but I think all of us watched it in analog. We watched that Luke Besson space prison movie, Lockdown, right? Yeah, I did not. I, I've I seen watched it. it at your house. No, nope, I've never, I, seen, never I, seen it. I watched it at your no, house. No, you didn't. Did too. Did we? <laughs> your, yes, a thousand percent. It was at your, your Columbia house, or, you know. I know, I know for a fact that I did. I mean, I'm gonna go with it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, 
I don't recall. One of the time, like, house at your house, but it was at, it was at your house. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But let me continue. Okay. That movie, there was a lawsuit against that movie that that won because they sued because they said it was too much like Escape from New York. Right? They won that lawsuit. Now that movie is similar to Escape from New York. But, like, it's in space. There's differences. The characters aren't named Snake Plissken enough. My point is, is this Willy's Wonderland is, it's it's Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, how the hell does this exist and not get sued? But the other one does. I don't understand. Like, there's a Five Nights at Freddy movie in production right now. God knows why, because the game is, hasn't been popular in three years. But, anyway, I don't understand. I, I don't understand legality is what I'm trying to say. Um, other than that, uh, this movie is absolute dog shit. It's oh. eight, 88 minutes that you'll never get back in your life. Uh, it's boring. It's filled with like shitty actors. It's shot really lazy. It's edited really lazy. The music cues suck. Like everything about it is bad. Nicholas Cage, uh, is, I guess the lead actor, but like he doesn't speak for the entire movie. Which I thought at first was like a cute like video game nod, like he was playing like the protagonist. We, we all know in video yeah. games when all the other characters are like, you know what I'm talking about, right? And then your character just nods, and then they keep talking. That's what he you does. Know, you know what I'm talking about, poo poo butthole. <laughs> right? Yeah, you know what's <laughs> the character's name? <laughs> so, oh my dick's big, dick is big. <laughs> No, it's you, like, know, you no, know it's what like, I'm talking about, ass. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about, jacks my dick off. That's my <laughs> new character. But anyway, uh, so the movie, uh, I I don't know. I guess it's trying to be like cute and funny because Nick Nick Cage never talks. He also like um, he never runs into any problem. Like he fights all these demonic like Chuck E. Cheese characters, but like he kills them all easily. Like, he's never presented with any kind of, like, problem. There's no uh, stakes. There is zero stakes. There's a, <laughs> I like there's stakes. A, there's, a, there's, a, there's some other characters that you're introduced to that are, like, kids that live in this town that know that this place is evil and they're trying to burn it down. And they're, like, useless. Like, they just exist so they can get killed. Uh, and the most annoying thing, this is a non-rated movie. This is just on, like, Amazon or whatever. You can rent it. Um, it's not a theatrical release, so it's not rated. But there's a sex scene between these two, like, sexy kids, and the, no tits. No tits or no ass. This girl's wearing, like, a miniskirt that, like, I mean, it defies logic. You mean sexy kids, like, in It? Like, that kind of sexy kid sex scene? No, sexy kids, like, like Friday the 13th <laughs> right, style. Right. Sexy, sexy young legal adults. <laughs> sexy, to sexy, sexy, like, 26-year-olds playing 19-year-olds. Gotcha, gotcha. But, like, how do you not have tits in this movie? Like, at least give me that. Um, but this movie sucks. They, they didn't even spend any time to, like, make the locations look right. Like, it's just it's just the, like, epitome of just bad, boring filmmaking. It, it's just, just shit directly into a red box. If there that's was, it, this what, that's exactly what it is. Like, it's just like, well, we got Nick Cage, and it's kind of quirky, and people know Five Nights at Freddy's, so maybe we can get people to rent it. So it's like, yeah, whatever. It's one of those movies where after I watched it, I was like, yeah, I feel perfectly fine not giving since, these people any money. Since Nick Cage doesn't speak, does he bring anything to this movie? No. He doesn't do anything. Like, he literally just, like... I think he was court-ordered to appear in this movie. This is oh, his, you think it's a tax thing? Yeah, this I is, think... This is his character in the movie. He he blows his tires, and, 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 like, and then it's like a Texas Chainsaw thing. Like, this town... Basically, they have to feed the monsters that live in the Chuck E. Cheese or whatever. So they have their tire spikes out. So, like, you basically trap, like, newcomers. So they, it's you know, Children they, of the Corn or whatever. Well, yeah. like, I said Texas Chainsaw because, like, you know, in the gas station they had the barbecue. It's, like, the same yeah. idea. Like, the mechanic, like, leads that leads Nick Cage to the fucking Chuck E. Cheese. And I don't know. Like, you're, like you're an adult man. Let me take you to Chuck E. Cheese to wait for your car. No, 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 no. So it's, I mean... No. What happens is Nick Cage can't afford uh, to pay for like his car repair because the guy doesn't have the guy doesn't accept credit cards and of course Nick Cage doesn't have any cash. 
So he's like, all right, well, my buddy that owns the Chuck E. Cheese will pay for your car repair if you can clean up this place overnight. That's it. That's the fucking plot. Now, Nick Cage, what he does is, again, he never speaks, literally never says a word. He'll cle- he cleans up. It's montages of him cleaning up. Then he takes, like, like 15-minute breaks where he chugs, like, an energy drink. And then goes back to cleaning, then fights a monster, wash and repeat. That's the entire movie. And then the kids, the kids are like trying to break in, and then they do, and then that's then they get murdered by the monster. It's awful. It's fucking awful. It was so bad. It reminded me of something that Sean said a couple of weeks ago, where it's like I had full plans because the movie is very short. The movie's only eighty eight minutes long, so I'm like, cool, I'll watch this, and then I'll have time to watch another movie before I fall asleep. And I watched it, and I hated it so much, and it like just put such a bad taste in my mouth. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm not watching any more movies tonight." Like, <laughs> I'm done. I'm not watching anything else. Uh, also, I found out that apparently we didn't like the so the rock of fire ex- explosion is Showtime Pizza. They we didn't yeah. have those growing up. Showtime Pizza was like a Showbiz Pizza. Showbiz Pizza. There was one in Laurel. Is that right? When we were kids, yeah. I don't even remember that. I, I I only remember Chuck E. Cheese. And Chuck E. Cheese ended up buying out uh, Showbiz Pizza. Just but anyway, yeah, don't watch uh, Willy's Wonderland. It's trash. Wasn't gonna. Well, it's funny because that was going to be my birthday pick. Because I was like, ooh, Nick, a new Nick Cage movie? I feel like that would be good for the show. He's not there. done great by it how, lately. How dare you? Why? They're, how dare you? Because they're the usually last bad. Movie you, the last Nick Cage movie you picked was Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. yeah. So you were going to pick another one? You're going to see this to us this again? Is be- this is better than jujitsu. Hey, I, I, I picked a good movie next week, so you guys are fine. I feel like Alec doesn't like Nick Cage just in toto. Like, What's your favorite Nick Cage movie, Alec? Face Off? Face Off or Con Air? Oh. Put the okay. bunny back. You're not, a, you're not a Raising Arizona fan? Mm, I haven't seen it since I was really young. I don't know. Maybe. What is, what is Nick Cage's ridiculous name in Con Air? Caster Troy. No, that's no, no it's um it's oh, it's something that's, super that's right. southern. It's like it's it's like Cameron Poe. It's is Cameron that? Poe, that's it. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> Thurston Christ. Huckabee, but it's Cameron Poe. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Thurston <laughs> Huckabee. Yeah, it's Cameron Poe. Is that isn't, Mike? That the, isn't that the millionaire from Gilligan's Island? That's Thurston Howell. Ow. The third. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's Cameron Poe in Con Air. He's Caster Troy in Face Off, and he is uh, Stan Lagurdspreid in uh, in The Rock. The Rock. Yeah. And that's just that's that's the the critical Nick Cage trifecta right there of the I think ninety five to ninety eight. I mean, what about uh, you're not leave, you're, you're leaving out leaving Las Vegas? That's a good movie. No, those are those are that's like that weird moment where Nick Cage was like, "I'm an action star now. I'm gonna be in three back to back to back." Okay, I understand. All right, let's get into this week's movie, which was exi- or, uh, yeah, it was exactly it might as well have been. Yeah. Oh no, this is I, I'm gonna I think- put it out front street. This is a million times better than yeah. fucking executive decision. We watched Air Force One, which kept making me think of the Nelly song. You know what? Maybe this is going to be a weird take, but uh, before you get into the movie, I feel like this would have made an awesome movie if you had plucked Kurt Russell out of the other movie and replaced Harrison Ford with him just as the actor. I liked Harrison Ford in this. He was I right. thought he was super boring. He seemed tired most of this yeah. movie. <laughs> I mean, he was getting outshined by Gary Oldman, but who doesn't? I mean, Harrison Ford has seemed tired for like 30 years now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Get he off knows, my plane. He's like... He's he's like Bruce Willis, yeah. But he's just in better stuff. Just phoning it in. I don't know. I mean, I don't know about phoning it in. I just don't think he has like any kind of energy level. Like, and he has a long time. Like, what's the last thing he's had any charisma in? Uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Boom. Well, yeah, that's it. Well, he's he's, he's he's playing a tired old man in that movie. Yeah. (laughs) Like he's playing. He's actually playing his. He is very good in that movie. Um. Before that, though, I could, I don't know. He was straight up trash in those Star Wars movies. Oh, what's the one? Yeah, he wasn't very good in those. What's the, um, 
What's the one where he's the bad guy? Well, what lies beneath? I think he was good in that. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I, all I remember is I, I watched that movie regarding Henry about 9,000 times when I was a kid because it was always on HBO. It's not even about uh, Henry. Some rich asshole that gets shot in the head in a mugging and they have to like reprogram his memory. Oh, oh the, the fugitive? Fugitive's oh, good. good. The fugitive slash, yeah. but, yeah. but that's a very long time ago. Yeah. Like maybe three or something. Yeah. He, did, he did a bunch of like rom coms for a while, didn't they? Like, he was in the, the f- with uh, Anne Hache, the six days, seven nights. Yeah. Days. So this was and some so I- other stuff. And by the way, Nick. My favorite Nick Cage movie is Kick Ass. Okay, well, he is really good in. He's good. He's yeah. fun in that. Uh, yeah, there's after after the Fugitive was ninety three. Air Force One was ninety seven, and after that you get Six Days, Seven Nights. You get K nineteen, The Widowmaker, where he's like the Russian captain. I don't remember seeing that. Homicide. There's. Oh, have you guys have you guys seen those? I think they're Geico commercials, but it's like. Er, or maybe I don't know some insurance company, but it's like when you buy a house, you turn into your parents. Yeah, yeah. And Who reads one, books about submarines? It's reading yeah. books about submarines, and the name, the title of the book is <laughs> Thunder Siege. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, I think, I think you nailed it, Alec. I think his last one that he was compelling in was probably The Fugitive. I know he was great in uh, Bruno in the two seconds he's in that. Oh yeah, fuck away from me. Yeah. <laughs> Or, or I mean, 2049, but then there's a big gap between under or the fugitive and 2049. What? No love for uh, the crystal skull. No uh, love for the crystal skull. So no love for. Yeah. So bad, crystal skull. But who ain't? Hard time. <laughs> Hard time. <laughs> All right. So Air Force One. Who wants to des- describe what happens in this fucking movie? It's, and it's smelted Delta rules. Uh, so that means I got to do it. I mean, I'll do it. I don't care. You do it. Go now. Okay. Uh, God's, so, God's just going to butcher it because he hated it. I know. Alex, Untr- you Untr- it. Untr- oh, what? Wait. Let Alex on. Do it. Okay. This is going to be quick. <laughs> All right. Uh, start off with a midnight. I'm going to join my apple. Start off with a, a midnight Call of Duty 4 rescue. Not rescue. Uh, it starts out exactly the way Executive Decision starts. Yes, same scene. Yeah, it had the same, the same movie. <laughs> oh, this yeah. one was better. This one was better. Yeah. This was, this, this was the loudest covert operation I've ever seen, though. Oh, oh yeah. They didn't do anything. To, like, once they were in, like, they didn't give up. They went fuck. loud fast. <laughs> They're, like, throwing out? grenades. They're just like, whatever, <laughs> man. Did this come out before or after exactly? I thought it was decision? the same year. Is this like a deep impact fucking uh Can we talk about this last week? I think it was the same year. Executive decision was hoping people would see that thinking it was this. Executive decision was ninety six, Air Force One was ninety seven. So it's a part. <laughs> oh, I guess yeah. yeah. Never mind. They were filming at the same time. Parallel um, They kidnap general Tanda or whatever. It's a uh, it's it's a uh, Supreme uh, Emperor Leto from uh, Doom. <laughs> that same actor. It's the da- it's the bad guy from Beer Fest. Yeah, <laughs> you're, talking, you're talking about General oh, Radic. Radic. Yeah, that's a yeah. Radic. General. I love that guy from e- Beer Fest. Radic. Operation yeah. Steingrabber. Steingrabber. <laughs> Twelve hours. Und. Und. Und Bex. Und Bex. That movie, now, that movie is, that that movie is, so, is good. so good. That's that's. I think that's their best movie. I agree. I would agree. It's I up agree. like it took a long time, but I think it holds up better than Super Troopers. I, think I have I like, a lot. I have a lot of love for the Slam and Salmon though. Like I have a lot like, of love for that movie. Slam Come Slam on, pretty goddamn funny. Well, Slam you know and Salmon's good, good, but it's not as good as Beer Fest or Super Troopers. I gotta rewatch Ooh. Beer Fest. Club Dread. Club Dread's their worst one, but I still like that one. My only What's my only complaint. I think my only complaint about Beer Fest is it's like two and a half hours long. It's long. Yeah. Like, it's, it's too long for a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a David <laughs> Lee movie. Beer. Steve <laughs> Levy jerking off frogs for science. <laughs> What's a ZJ, if you have to ask? Yeah, <laughs> you can't afford it. <laughs> Shit, um, pancakes for a year. That guy fucking yeah, I was playing ping pong and ding dang. <laughs> I was playing ping pong and ding dang. It's an amazing play. 
what about the scene where he gets like after they do the first night of like training, he wakes up and he's like bloody naked next to a deer that it's like all like disemboweled and he's, he's like, says, not, a oh, no, not a kid. <laughs> All right, never mind. Oh, what what about Hunter's best one? He just snowballed to that guy. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Why yeah. do you guys just call me Landslide? I feel like I feel like I know you guys from all the stories that I've been told already. <laughs> It'll make me feel really good if you just called me Landfill. Oh, that's it, Landfill. <laughs> Look, he's Isn't bagging his crazy? wife. He's Landfill 2. You're way better than Landfill 1. She puts, I once the saw picture, her. she puts the picture down <laughs> and puts the picture up of Landfill 2. What was the, the, the eulogy? It's like, I once saw him fart an entire plum. I was plum surprised. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Your best is the best one. <laughs> I think Super Troopers had more of an impact on me because it shocked me how funny it was, but Beer yeah. Fest is a better movie. Yeah. Um, anyway, back to Air Force One. <laughs> Air Force One, I'm just going to point out, this, this whole, this whole <clears throat> capture scene is completely eradicated by the end of the movie. Eradicated? Yes. Like, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even, like, there's no... It should have just been an assassination, and then... We'll get into that, because I don't understand that part either. Like, that part okay. doesn't make any sense. Continue. Well, this was pre-9-11, so the United States was not killing every terrorist. Oh, but they were just capturing... Yeah, they were capturing <laughs> them and turning them into their countries. That, right. So and now letting we're... them deal, do the, the, the justice... So smash cut to Hogwarts. You guys do the justice. We're out of here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So then <laughs> Harrison right. Ford, President Ford, is at a state dinner. <laughs> Thank you, President Ford. In Russia with the president of Russia or premier of Russia or whatever he would have been. President. What's what's his crazy ass America name? It's like Jack. What the fuck is his? His name James, is Marshall. James Marshall. James Marshall. Jim Marshall. Jim Marshall. Former uh, fucking defensive lineman for the Vikings. <laughs> um. Yeah. State state dinner <laughs> with the Russian with the Russian president at the Kremlin, presumably. Yeah, I would guess. I mean, that's what they showed before, right beforehand. They showed like the Kremlin, and apparently the Kremlin can host. Like, like, right before the sorting hat shows up, everybody that was possible to be part of this operation, and then it's a weird Russian American love fest. Mm. Yeah. So, President, President, President Marshall. <laughs> That's a good gets, That's not he bad. Gets, not he gets he gets up to give a, a speech, and I couldn't quite understand his speech. I was kind of tuning out a little oh. bit. Oh, he's full on mumbling already in this movie. But he's taught like the dead will remember. <laughs> <laughs> he's the the retro president gave a speech, I guess, about like law and order and justice and blah blah blah. And President Marshall gave a a speech afterwards about like unity and togetherness and. <laughs> No, he gives a he gives out a he gives out an ultimate he gives the well he, he basically comes everybody out and says yeah we will we will no longer fuck you up. do diplomacy we will straight up murder every terrorist yeah, we are we are now wrong. team america world police like that's basically. the policy he's set in motion hmm. good for him um president president marshall the, his advisors tell him you shouldn't have done that you <laughs> You should have just followed the speech and not ad libbed, blah blah blah. But it didn't matter because the terror plot that's about to happen was already way in motion. Um, his wife, he gets on the Air Force One. His wife and kids show up to get on the plane after uh, the Russian ballet and after meeting uh, Santa Claus. Real the quick, Santa Claus, uh, Scott I don't want to de- derail this, <laughs> but can we? Uh... Take just a minute to appreciate how bad this extra is that tells him the score of the Michigan game. <laughs> oh God, yeah! Like he comes in, like he's doing, like about to break out in a musical number. It's like, hey, Jim, the score is fourteen, twelve, Wolverines, and then he's just oh, it's like, it's like, what's his? It's like 
what's the thing from uh, being John Malkovich? Like, suck it, Malkovich. It just comes in hot with that can. <laughs> Basically, so, yeah. I will say, a card. It's a good bit. Like, the, the execution, the guy that, that delivers the final punchline sucks. But the bit is pretty good because, like, he gets on the plane and everybody's trying to tell him the fucking score of the game because he's a big Michigan fan or whatever. Yeah. He's like, don't tell me, don't tell me. I want to fucking watch it. I'm the fucking president. And then, like, that fucking doofus is like, hey, it's fucking 14 13 Michigan. Go fucking Wolverines or whatever. Go Big Blue. <laughs> um, his wife and kid get on the plane after the, after the ballet. His wife is played by the mom from Santa Claus. It's funny because I'm pretty sure she's the mom in all three Santa Claus movies, but the third one doesn't show up on her IMDb. Hey, can we pause real quick? Sean, what did you think of this lady? She's got an aggressive uh, jawline. Yeah, she, I was into it. Yeah, me too. You know what I like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we see Gary Oldman as a newsman and his team of reporters. Gary his news crew gets uh, gets on the plane because they've been granted an interview with the president, I guess, or something. Which is nuts. <laughs> like a, a whole foreign news crew on Air Force One where they're flying to where, presumably? D.C., I guess. Were they yeah. flying? Do they go from Russia straight to D.C., or do they stop usually? No, the plan, I think the plan was to go all the way home. Well, I, I had to I look mean, this maybe. up. That plane can go 9,700 miles without Jesus refueling. Right. Yeah. That's like That's three times time. around the Earth. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, so they're solid. <laughs> it's like going to Florida and back. There are signs in Maryland that say to get to California is like 2,300 miles. But you go the other the way States. across the Atlantic oh. to get there. Oh, because you gain time back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I got you. Um, they're, they're in flight. The president's being pulled every which way. He just wants to see his wife and kid and make sure they're good to go. He really back. wants to see his kid. His wife is not as concerned with. All their way back to America. The news crew is uh, acting shifty. They may as well have been like the uh, dog in The Simpsons with his eyes going back and forth. <laughs> I wish they had made Borat one of the news crew because that would have been really fun. That would have been yeah. really funny because it was like 10 years before Borat was even a thing. It's the it's, 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 they should have retroactively put him in the movie. Yeah. Like, like I said, can, like, like Borat. Borat. As soon as I heard Kazakhstan, I was done. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I couldn't Kaz- think Kazakhstani of Borat. Kazakhstani foreign correspondent Borat, whatever his last name <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah, Kazakhstan. Yeah. Kazakhstan is ruined. Because of Borat. <laughs> Air Force One wasn't doing any favors, though. But they're the world's third greatest producer of potassium. Yeah, that's And anti Semitism. <laughs> um. I get, they start the flight and they start all their normal bullshit flight stuff where everybody is like trying to go to sleep or type on their fucking crazy 90s laptops and use their <laughs> 90s cell phones, which are fucking wild. Um, <laughs> and then one of the Secret Service agents turns out he was a plant or he was turned by the. Not like the, Swamp Thing. The, yeah, not like Swamp Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a literal plant. So we would have known. We would have known right from the beginning. Hey, that guy's a plant. I'm not a plant. I'm an elemental. Sorry, um, that went way off the rails. My bad. Yeah. Please continue. <laughs> we uh, then we yeah we find out that he's. I, don't, I think that I don't think there's any like foreshadowing. I think he just at one point goes into the room. No, just, unlocks yeah. the gun the cabinet, closest, the turns closest around you, and shoots a couple of Secret Service agents. The most you get us. is like, he's telling everyone to take their seats, and he sort of gives them the eyes, like, I got my eyes on you, and then next thing you know, he's a bad guy for unknown reasons for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Except he's not, though. Like, he has all these up. Op- Never mind. Go ahead. Um... Yeah, he throws a smoke bomb into the press the press section, which causes confusion so that uh, the Russian slash Kazakh news crew can get all the assault rifles that are loaded and unlocked and ready to go. And they take the plane. 
and body armor. Yeah. Um. Sean, are you doing light construction? What's going on? No, this is, uh, I gotta get the dogs sorted out. Hang on. Keep going. The president. <laughs> where is he initially? He is, he is in his office. What do we see? He's asleep watching the Michigan game. And he's like, he was like hugging his daughter weird. And then everybody breaks in. <laughs> No, 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 no. I take it back. No, he's but in the boardroom. He's board all by room. himself when everything goes. No, no, he's in like the, goes to shit. He's in the conference room, and two guys rush in. They rush in and grab him, <laughs> and they they take him to the escape pod. And oh, that's then, right. The the secret service agent. That's how he gets by himself. Right. They take him to the escape pod, which is cr- like crazy and cool, and I didn't know it was a thing. It's not. <laughs> it's not. No, they made it up for the movie. Ow. I thought that was a neat idea. I Throw thought the cool, president yeah. in his pod and kick him out. And they then crash the signs aboard. Yeah, they crash, just they, crash they the just, plane on purpose. And it just him. lands neck deep in Iran, and then that's see how that works out. Um. So the president, spoiler alert, doesn't actually get on the pod because both the secret service agents get blasted. He uh, yeah, see he hides they, on he hides on top of the pod because he can't leave his family. Yeah. But I will say and I, I think that uh, I like I like the movie's subversion because like they they spend most of the time after the he, presumably he gets on the pod they spend most of the time in like the the situation room with the vice president and the cabinet and they're like oh we found a lock on the fucking pod or whatever it's been it's been jettisoned and I just then, like that shit actually happens in this movie, which is a big step shit up. Shit does from the happen. Last movie. Yeah, no. It's this movie like doesn't really slow down. Like, I, there's always something going on. I don't know. I, I, yeah, we get we get back and constant back and forth from uh, Glenn Close and Dean Stockwell. Yeah, the, Dean Stockwell. The, the, uh, is this the first movie we we've seen where TJ has a tattoo of one of the people in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, he has. Uh, we've seen Jaws. <laughs> oh yeah, fair. <laughs> watch it on the show. <laughs> watch it for Nate's show. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that, that's a. That's not in canon. <laughs> no, it's an Else Worlds thing. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was a Benicio del, del Toro tattoo. So now I've learned something. <laughs> Wait, what? He's Dean yeah, Stockwell. he likes. He loved Sicario so much. He got a tattoo. <laughs> he just liked that movie that's just called Wolfman with no oh, indefinite article. I hate that movie. So much. I'm shocked that that hasn't been on the show. That mo- I think it's very long. I think uh, probably it's. Oh yeah, it's like two and a half hours, maybe remember, maybe longer. That was one of like that was like pre Prometheus, like one of the biggest disappointment movies for me. I was so psyched for that movie, but it was just dog shit. Uh, anyway, back at back at the situation. Yeah, there's a the, the two of them are like bantering and like going back and forth the whole time, which they're both pretty engaging actors. So I was I was I didn't find it boring. No, no. I didn't. Um, they're having a constitutional crisis about who's in charge, and I'm surprised that it's never just the vice president. Yeah, and then the, well, the guy that took the constitution last week from. It's not. Who's it's? Oh, I learned all about this from the West Wing. The president technically has to like recuse himself in a situation like this, but if he can't, they have to get the signatures from all the the cabinet members, the, the cabinet members, and then the vice president has to approve it. Like if if it was something where like his family was kidnapped and he was there, like Harrison Ford could. Recuse himself from it. Oh, that's by right. Signing a letter. That was that West Wing. That West Wing plotline where his daughter got kidnapped, right? Yeah, and he yeah. he signed himself over to. Uh, he had no vice president at the time, so it was a speaker of the house that became president for like a week. It's like John Goodman or something, or yeah. Gary. Yeah, I learned a lot from that show about how government. Well, not how government works because none of it's accurate because it's not a nearly the real world is not nearly as hopeful and optimistic as the West Wing, but. The procedurally how things work. Yep. Um, so Harrison Ford starts fucking up Russian dudes who keep going below deck for reasons. Pause. 
I think that this was a good th- – this part I liked and how they handled this I liked a lot more than what happened in Executive Decision because, like, at one point, like, the – I don't know, one of the Joint Chiefs, the guy in front of the Air Force is like, this guy's a Silver Star winner or whatever. Like, he knows that like, he's flown combat missions. Like, at least it sets you up for the fact that he can handle his shit and it's not just, yeah. like, a weird – he's not a fish out of water. Yeah, yeah but it, at the same time, like, they give him the – he has the same level of plane flying as Kurt Russell does at the end of the other movie. It's like I've flown some light craft, no yeah, jet. Else that- <laughs> but he actually fails at it, which makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, like there's, there, in both movies, there's like I don't know how to land the plane moment. Also, like did did all of you go? Why don't you just look for your your flight manual that's right behind <laughs> you? Right. Yeah. Doesn't Air Force One have a book? <laughs> No, the pilots have to eat that book as soon as they're compromised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of things in that movie, in this movie, wouldn't have actually, wouldn't have mattered now because of nine eleven. Like the cabin, the cockpit wouldn't have been open. Like it would have been locked down from the second they took off. Oh, you're talking um, about an executive decision? No, in this. An executive decision, they did lock it, didn't they? Well, I guess that was open. Well, this too. is the Air Force One. Like, do you lock the fucking cockpit in Air Force One? Like, do you expect this to happen? I think that, I mean, I would imagine they take every precaution, even though they don't expect anything to happen. <laughs> but I don't know. I could be wrong. Anyway, well, he starts they, locked, they, locked working. they did lock it. They had to blow it with Semtex or something. They blew it up, remember? They blew it up in this movie. Yeah, these clay. Oh, that's, that's right. Plastic. But it was open, like, initially, and then they shut it. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. But the uh, Russian guys keep going below deck for different reasons. And for a while, Harrison Ford's just like picking them off one by one. Yeah. He, he does the thing I do in stealth video games. where I just He's a wait. camper. <laughs> I just wait for the guards to come to one spot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like in a Spider-Man when you had the stealth missions where you couldn't get... You couldn't get seen. You just, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Just wait and then web them up. Yeah. yeah. Um, that game is awesome. Um, eventually, some other, some guys that he can't take out, or they realize he's, he does a fuel dump. He, he, or I'm sorry. He does the world's luckiest uh, fucking jumping out of circuit because he doesn't hear the last part of it. And well, goes, first, he goes through the luggage, everybody's luggage, and finds a cell phone. And he's able to call the White House operator. Who answers oh. at, like, whatever time of day this he is. He calls it collect because he doesn't know the number. He calls and says, connect me to the White House. Dude, yeah, you know, like, sure. The Swiss no, he, he calls him. is hilarious. She Information just, used to do that. Like, if you remember, if you called information, they would connect you so you didn't have to hang up Shouldn't and dial the it. the president but... know the number to the White House? I don't Why? know the number no. to my work. Why would, Why would he know the number? to? Well, he probably doesn't know his own phone number to, like, fair. his cell phone. That's People fair. just call him. He, he doesn't tell them his number. The Good point. probably doesn't know shit, dude. He's always t- he's got a thousand people to do, do everything for him. They don't drive. They don't, like, they don't do anything. They um, just get loose with MP5s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he got loose. So he got this 90s-ass cell phone. He calls the White House Collect. They pay the dollar. So he can talk to. I, I think you mean the, to say we paid the dollar. Oh yeah, we paid the dollar. That's a very so he can talk call. to the vice president and the joint chiefs and uh, whatever cap the secretary of defense I think is in there. Certain cabinet members are in there, and they're all thrilled he's alive. And they connect him to uh, the other set of pilots for the plane because I think they have like rotating rotating crews. Um, and they're walking him through how to do a fuel dump, and then his phone dies like all those Nokia brick phones would die. Because, you know, notoriously, they had short battery lives. <laughs> um, and it dies right as he's about to tell him the second wire needs to cut and connect. But luckily, he's patriotic, so he says, well, it can't be the red, white, or blue wires. <laughs> <laughs> Green and yellow, do your That's thing. It. Dude, that shit rules. I don't care. What, like, I don't know. I, I like, like his delivery on the line. Like I, I like, his like, sort of, like he kind of reserved himself to 
All right, red, white, and blue. I didn't mind that. I feel like at that point in the movie, I'm like, yep, I'm in. Like, it's so fucking stupid that he says that, but it, it fucking rocks. Like, it's so dumb, but I loved it. It felt very Indiana Jones at that oh. point. Yeah, so what, what, they should have just made his character actually Indiana Jones. I know yeah. he'd be 150 years old, but still. This is President Henry Jones Jr. <laughs> <laughs> we named the dog Indy. <laughs> we named the, we named the Indy. Vice President Indy. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of saying get off my plate, he just yells, it belongs in a museum, and then just throws Yeah, Gary and then the, the Russian premiere could be one of those broads that he fucked, and he now is like, oh, I gotta call this bitch. Oh, you remember that time? <laughs> you yeah, let totally. this guy go. <laughs> yeah. Um also yeah, so this is, a, he, this movie is like exactly the plot of Die Hard minus the bearer bonds. It's like the yeah, straight plot of Die Hard. Wow, really you're is right. A hard movie, yeah. But if you if you're going to imitate a movie, that's a hell of a movie to imitate. Oh yeah. Um yeah, so he does a successfully dumps a bunch of fuel. Uh Peter Parker's landlord comes yeah. down <laughs> to see what's going on. So funny that it's a- <laughs> With a, a hired goon. Hired, hired goon. goon. They lay enough suppressing fire that they can get in there and fix the fuel dump that he did. Yeah, we get like a solid three minutes of Hogan's Alley where just a silhouette pops out and starts shooting at each other. Um, And then a part that made zero, like, there's a lot of movies that doesn't make sense, and I really didn't care that most of it didn't make sense. But this actually bothered me, like, the other guy like pokes his head down over the like the porthole or whatever to be, to be like, "Hey, are you guys okay?" And he responds to him in Russian. Yeah, no, that's he explained. speaks Russian in the beginning and, yeah, a the little beginning, bit. He speaks uh, Russian, and they're like, they're yeah, like "Does he say that? that does like, he say the same words?" Because no, no, but they, there was a there was like a line where it's like, "My mom wanted me to learn Spanish or something, yeah, but he learned and, Russian it's instead." That he speaks yeah. in Russian. I must have missed that. I actually, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. After the initial, uh, the initial kidnapping scene, I checked out for a little bit. Like I was like, "This is boring," and it really picked up. And then I got back into it and kind of liked it after a, a little bit. So yeah, some of I that, see that. Some of I that feel ex- like exposition at the beginning, like I just glossed. I feel over like every it. time Gary Oldman's in the scene, he glues it back together. Like so I think he's Gary really good. Really good in this. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't talked a whole lot of about him because like he, he, he seems, has, yeah, he like, has a great all- line where they're like. War criminal, it's like you kill a hundred thousand Iraqis to save a nickel on a gallon of gas. Fuck you. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. I kind of agree <laughs> with <it>. Yeah. <laughs> or, like the the whole point of when he's talking about like when like they're asking like what is what does he want? And he's like, My he's like, I can't he explains like when you when I pull all of the capitalists out of the yeah. out of the Kremlin and murder them into the street, I'm like, Yeah, this motherfucker's thing. <laughs> It's, I know this isn't the movie's fault, and this is like the you know viewing it with the today's lens. But like, I can't take a movie seriously where the president of the United States is a hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I can't take a movie where the president of the United States is competent. Also, he's like, no bullshit. Jim Marshall's a bit of a fascist. Oh yeah, a little bit, a little, little bit. Oh, he's big into uh, Russian supremacy. <laughs> um so yeah so he tricks the third russian that's there i think there's like six or seven total but they're all competent enough where like the seven of them like took the whole plane like they had it planned out really well yeah um, they took out the secret service guys like and they, they were pretty much well the one secret service guy took out like Four Secret Service guys, yeah. and then yeah. after that, it, then it, then once they had access to all the munitions, then it was just it's on like Donkey Kong. Kind of an interesting note about this movie: they had to build the set from pictures from CNN because, like, they wouldn't obviously would not send them you know schematics of the plane. They're cool. like, yeah, they're not gonna, you know, they're probably not gonna go over really well if we call up uh, the Marines or whatever. Like, yo, if terrorists had to board this plane, what would be the best way to? Yeah, do what's it? the what's the most? <laughs> how's, the, how's the easiest way for them to pull this off? Uh, so this is when President Marshall gets out from un, out from underneath the plane and gets top level and starts doing work <laughs> on the top side. Oh well, this you this there's a great part where Gary Oldman's got his chief of staff or whatever. And he's like, he thinks it's a Secret Service agent in the bottom of the plane, and he's like, I'm gonna, um, 
I'm going to kill this woman in 10 seconds if you don't show yourself. And you think he's going to come out, but he doesn't. And he just like murks her in the face. Oh, yeah. yeah. His like, what a chief of. She's like a press secretary or, or something. Yeah. 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 Ooh, I think I I mentioned, yeah. I mentioned this in the last movie. I was like, I think they needed to do like a Pelham one, two, three, where it's like, we're going to kill somebody every 20 minutes or whatever. And they do exactly that. And they do kill these people. Yeah. yeah. They don't, they don't, fuck they don't just like, there's no, like in Pelham one, two, three, didn't they like negotiate off of everyone yeah they were supposed to in, kill. in the remake yeah they like backed off because of different reasons and different things yeah. happening i was talking um, about the original but yeah the remake they do oh, like get out of it i've never seen the, i've never seen the original it's uh, i've only it's seen got, the bad one it's got quentin uh so i will say in this scene where like gary oldman threatens to kill the lady harrison ford like grapples with giving himself up but then ultimately kind of realizes that if he gives himself up like that's it. And the, I like this bit where he's like, yeah, if you give a mouse a cookie, like, he's like, all right, yeah, like, he understands. I, I don't know, like, one of those things where, like, I, I, again, I, I think I like this movie a little bit more than most of you guys. Yeah, I think we're going to have a weird flip-flop with this movie. But I thought, like, that was actually, like, an interesting character moment that we just don't get in a lot of movies that we watch. Like, I was like, all right, like, that's pretty nuanced. And I will say that the thing I don't like is that immediately after that happens, not immediately, maybe like one or two scenes after, there's a sequence where they're talking to all the people, all the hostages that are still in the plane are talking to each other. And William H. Macy is there, and it's the other guy who I think is, isn't that Shia LaBeouf's dad in Transformers? It just kind of looks like him. Anyway. No, it's not. Well, he's like, he's like, I wanted that son of a bitch that didn't give himself up. And then William H. Macy explains like, oh no, it's it, like uh, whoever's doing this, it's a guy that understands he's a hunter with one shot and you wait until the right moment. So it's like, Simon. you kind of over explain that scene from my case, but I, I still don't hate it. So I got a problem with part of this because the, I the, know what your point's going to be. And I, go ahead, uh, say it. You're, you're, you're upset that the, the fucking mole didn't do anything while he was with all those people. Well, the mole could have said, there's not an extra Secret Service guy, they're all dead. Like, he could have easily have just, like, what have is, upset that apple cart. What does he benefit from saying this? What does he benefit from anything? He's pointless he's just, in this movie. He's trying to fucking, at that point, like, he's just trying to stay alive. He doesn't give a shit. But what's his end game? Screw it. Keep going. His end game, and he says it right at the end before he dies. He's like, when he's like, I need to get off this plane. And, like, the you know, Harris before is like, I trusted you. And he's like, yeah, the next guy will trust me, too. Like, he's just self-preserving himself at this point. What? He probably that, made that's one. the dumbest. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I was the like, dumbest motivation for anything in any movie. Well, why? Like his end game. If, if this all works out, he's just going to continue being a secret service agent. Or he gets money or whatever. Or however he got coerced to be part of the terrorists all to begin with. It doesn't matter. So it, it's continue. I don't understand why that's dumb. He's a piece of shit that sold out. Right. So, so There's after- numerous opportunities in this movie where he could have undone everything because he was in a position to I, I do kinda so. I kind of agree with Gogs because like you everybody have to, else's motivations sense. are very well explained. And his is just kind of like, yeah, we get that it's self-preservation at the end. But like, what was your what first was, motivation? Like, was his family kidnapped or like, did he need money? Something like you got to give me something for that because it's just like, oh, it's like, oh, yeah. Because there's either either he's a good guy or a bad guy. And there's numerous <laughs> points in the movie he's where you could have undone the whole thing. He's definitely a bad guy. There's he's no- definitely a bad guy. But I'm saying like there's numerous points in the movie where he's like in the hostage pool unnecessarily. Here's how you fix it for me. Gary Oldman. After the plane, after everything gets done, like he has a moment with that Gibbs guy, and he's like, "Thank you," and he zaps him in the head. I'm like, "Okay, cool." It's kind of tied up for me then. I can, I can, you know, I don't know why he did it, but doesn't matter. He's off the, he's off the board. Sorry, I'll continue. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I forget where we were now. No, he's the just getting to talking. The- yeah, he's like, getting so. to the surface level. Harrison oh, Ford, yeah, so Harrison Ford is ex- he, he's he's made it past uh, stage one. <laughs> okay, so he, I think at this point he reveals himself to the rest of the his crew because they're supposedly under lock and key from this one guy that he just got the 
got the jump on and then knock either knocks out. Does he kill him? No. I don't remember. But he gets the jump on him and he goes and he then they formulate an escape plan for mm. everybody. Which I thought I liked. Yeah, I thought it was like well, it was Operation thought, Snooper thought, Facts for half a second. I thought a, an escape plan was better than like, well, let's uh, let's try to retake the plane. Like they're just like, no, fucking get everybody off. And they get most yeah, that's of the all I'm talking off. about. <laughs> <laughs> they get most of the people off. Some with parachutes. A, a uh, Chekhov's fax machine. So now this this secretary is going to be the postmaster general. <laughs> she saves everybody everybody's lives if she survived. Oh, she they showed her calmly <laughs> calmly parachuting to yeah. safety at fifteen thousand feet and two hundred. This miles poor an woman hour. looks like fucking Sapphire. That woman that was with Dusty Rhodes in the WWF. She's like the most kind of like stereotypical. Oh my God. Like, hey, sugar, you know, talking to the president. Um, um, general. <laughs> you want to be the postmaster general if we survive this? Does this plane have dial up? <laughs> um. So yeah, so they they come up with a plan. They after the fuel dump, they're low on fuel, so they they know the plane needs a refuel. Or is this before, or I'm sorry, is this before or after the president makes the insane decision to order the the fucking Air Force to shoot a missile at them? This is well after because he is on the, he's on the the internet phone or whatever. And he's like explaining to the Wishmaster that if even if the plane got fired upon, it would just shake it around and we all fall on our face. And then you have that, you have the worst CGI planes shooting at the second worst CGI plane. It looks like yeah. Wing Commander. This yeah. is an incredible gamble. <laughs> He's like, yeah, just have this guy like legit shoot a missile at him. Light him up. Fine. Yeah. I got that Robotech shit that like shoots yeah. out of the back of it. Oh, yeah, the, the chaff. Got that yeah. chaff. Uh, so every, every 90% of the people get off the plane. All that's left are William H. Macy, the president, his family. The evil secret service agent, and then whoever the fat guy is—I can't. I don't know what his role, like chief of staff, also, maybe chief of, chief of staff or secretary of they, state. They also release the prisoner that they want him to release. At oh some yeah, point. General, he gets him. General he calls, yeah. he calls and gets him to release the prisoner because the uh, because Gary the Oldman threatens to shoot his daughter. Yeah, and, and the president of Russia owes him a solid. Pretty much. And then Gary Oldman gets killed in a very unceremonious sort of way on the worst set you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. What I thought was he interesting. Gets, when he, when, go ahead. Sorry. He, Gary Oldman takes the president's wife down to the underbelly of the plane where everybody else par- parachuted <laughs> out initially. And he puts on a parachute, throws all the other parachutes off the plane, which is hilarious. Yeah. He's just like chucking them one at a time. Like these are all your parachutes and now they're gone. Also, not like, to basically be a, like a uh, kid, like I'm taking my ball and going home. Not to be a pedant, but um, air force one probably doesn't have a cargo bay like that because they're not flying tanks everywhere. They called it the, when the, when the hatch opened, they called it the parachute. <laughs> Hatch. Yeah, so nah, maybe it's just they, specifically for that reason. There, there aren't even parachutes on Air Force One, apparently. Huh. No escape yeah. pods, no, no parachutes. We die like men. That place a death trap. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your death trap, ladies. I don't know. I don't understand why Gary Oldman's like taking hostages at this point. He should be zapping people and just going for it. Like, yeah, they already is... released. Well, I guess they didn't. He wasn't the the general. Wasn't in a. He was casually picking up his stuff from Frank there was, Oz. There was, like a, and, there was a ticking clock, right? Like he, he was waiting for. They let the general out of the prison, but they were waiting for confirmation that he got on like the hind of his forces or whatever. That was like, a yeah. Uh, can we talk about real quick at this point where I guess the Kazakh military decides to start World War Three? Yeah, that this, like wing of MIGs they said that doesn't make any goddamn sense. Is that so? So. Uh, 
Gary Oldman gets got, and it's pretty great when he gets got because he's like he gets like his he gets his neck broke in like the most fun way possible. That's yeah, Harrison, Harrison Ford's second neck snap in the film. Yeah, he yeah, gets Harrison like a, like an Xbox wraps like Punisher a, death. Yeah, he wraps awesome. he wraps like a cargo strap around his neck and then pulls his parachute. So the wind from the plane just snaps his neck. It fucking rules. It's really, That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So so then they they're like you know he's got to like his wife's like uh, the first lady's like go fucking return the like you know rescind the order or whatever. So then Harrison Ford runs back to the phone and is like I don't know get fucking Radic or whatever Radish whatever his fucking name is and then they just murder him. They could just murder him to start the movie, and then we don't have a movie. Why did they just kill him to begin with? If they just had no problem murdering him, why'd they even put him in jail? No, he's like, he's like I, the, I assume it's they're like planning the on torture, either torturing him or they didn't want to make him a martyr. Yeah, uh-huh. but they made him a martyr anyway. He's like that greaser in Shawshank Redemption. He's just strolling out in the yard and gets zapped. It was like very odd that it was like, okay. Well, Harrison Ford with the Russian government is like your girlfriend that doesn't know where she wants to eat. So you end up driving to one restaurant and as you're pulling into the parking lot, no, no, wait a minute. I want Applebee's. It's like, fuck. Okay. Like, <laughs> Who wants Applebee's? I'm just I saying. used to. I got riblets. Riblets. <laughs> God, the worst part of the rib. <laughs> the wet. The wet. <laughs> the wet. Uh, yeah, so Gary Oldby gets got. General Raddick, General Raddick gets got. All the terrorists are dead. Harrison Ford has to figure out freedom how to fly fighters. This, freedom fighters. Harrison Ford has to figure out how to fly this plane back to uh, back to safety. He can't make it to Ramstein. He has to drive drive it, fly it to Turkey. A squadron of Kazakh MiG fighter jets comes after him, and he's playing basically trying to outrun these MiG jets before the U.S. Uh, F twenty twos or whatever they are at that point can uh can get there and save them. Apparently, Air Force One has uh heat flares, which I don't know what purpose they would serve on a commercial jet. So, so you, in case it gets lost in the woods. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that actually, that that part actually makes sense, right? Because that's like how you that's a countermeasure. To like an air attack, like that. Makes yeah, but they sense. have no other kind of offensive countermeasure. Oh, they have no you offense. Only, it's all you defense. can only do it once. This scene, yeah. this sequence, you, you hit your flares, oh. they're done. They just shoot another missile. Right. This sequence also gives us the fucking uh, American fighter pilot that like fucking takes one for the team. Oh, dude, <laughs> like, that part. I, I want to talk fucking, about he bodyguards about, himself. In yeah, the, I want to talk about Halo Two for a second. Uh, bless him up. First of all, this scene happens twice, once with a man and once with a plane within five minutes where <laughs> it's the take the bullet for the president. Apparently, MiGs have the slowest missiles on Earth because, like... How impossible he, would it be to line up the underbelly no, of your plane? He, he sees the missile come out of the plane. These, I, I know we're talking, like, you know, uh, in the air, so distance-wise, but the equivalent of a foot and a half behind Air Force One. And Halo 2's like, I got this, boys. He breaks formation <laughs> and then flies vertically, like, between the missile and Air Force One, which is the funniest goddamn thing I've ever seen in a movie There's a in my bunch of life. So the part where they send them to engage the MiGs, yeah. they're like, dump our fuel and get moving. There's like, they're flying over, <laughs> they're flying over real estate, and there's six planes that just dumped pods of yeah. jet fuel, <laughs> just they, they, dropping they, them on, like, yeah, it's, it's Poland. Like fucking- it's like Dresden all over again. <laughs> but they're just like pop, 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 zip. No big deal. Yeah. This movie, this, we also so you, stepped on the whole You scheme. boys are not getting home. BT no. dubs. <laughs> we, also, we also completely walked over the fact that the, the, the refueling scene from Top Gun uh, blows up midair. Yeah, that's because <laughs> Yeah, everybody gets, because everybody gets a little goofy with the stick. That um, scene is awesome. Anyway. Moving on. Uh, so they come up. Basically, the 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 U.S. fighter pilots just write write it like everybody's written it off. They're like they can't make it. They're almost out of fuel. They can't refuel. They're just gonna crash and everyone's gonna die. Yeah, the, the rudder's US, fucked the up US, from uh, yeah. Halo Two blowing up, and he's just like, "Sir, you're you're kicking ass over there." And it's like, "No, sir, look, sir, <laughs> look at me, look at me, God damn it, you're I awesome. love you." <laughs> yep. They salute each other because the president's gonna die. 
Um, and then they and come then up with another crazy The crazy plot from plan. Cliffhanger shows up. Yeah, and then physics is suspended immediately. Like, it's weird that they went through the whole hassle of making, like, the tail a rudder not functional, like, part of the landing, realistic. And then they make the most, like, ridiculous fucking escape plan that functions. It's a cool plan. It's, like, it the is, coolest but, plan ever. But for that pl- that plane to stay airborne, apparently it would have to be going so fast that the minute those guys jumped out of the plane, it would break the cord and <laughs> rip them in half. I didn't say physically it was possible. <laughs> But it's cool. <laughs> this movie is incredibly unrealistic with a well, the, the third act is a straight up cartoon. Oh, it's like, yeah. Um, yeah, so they they zip line from one plane <laughs> from another plane <laughs> to Air Force One. Yeah. They hook up their plane, their uh their carabiner. Like my carabiner breaks when my keys are on it wrong. Yeah, these guys care. Peters are like holding multiple men. <laughs> They're holding two planes together. Yeah. The planes are going hundreds of miles an hour. I mean like that you, too. Yeah, like if you thought the if you thought the umbilical from the last movie was foolish, where do you see double plane string? Wait line? get a load of me. Yeah. <laughs> and Gogs' favorite guy, the fucking turncoat secret agent, is just dicking around until the last possible moment. Or he's Get going off to be my asked, zip line. He's going to be asked several questions when he ends up over there and the president does not. <laughs> the, the, my favorite part is when you hear him screaming as the plane breaks that up and hits the ocean. He's like, ah! <laughs> it's like it's, it's like an asylum movie. It's no. so bad. It's so good. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, the plane the plane breaks up. The president gets gets a winched into the other plane, which <laughs> then becomes Air Force One. Dude, but I'm sure, the, I'm, sure are... the, I'm, I'm sure the president wouldn't agree that it's as good as Air Force One when he can't get his like espresso mochaccino. Well, it's funny because where's my Michigan is, game? Can not wait until he can say we're Air Force One now. Like, yeah, yeah fuck like, yeah. Screw that. Now we're Joe kick ass. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, like the dummies or whatever they were using for the scene are so hilariously <laughs> flapping around in this like you know several hundred mile an hour gust. Like I could not stop laughing for this yeah. whole scene. It's fantastic. I really did not like the fucking the Secret Service guy. <laughs> That's the best part. It was so funny. Like holding like, on to this guy like, 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 like an earthquake drill. Like jump out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're dead no matter what. I don't think, like... Swab it out. And where would, how would they over ocean at that point? Because there's like nothing but land masses. No, they showed on the radar they were going to have to go over whatever some ocean to get to Turkey or sea or whatever. Okay. The radar shots showed that. Um, And that's... See? That's it. it. Every, everybody, and, everybody back at the White House celebrates. And they, rip they up, are... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. I know I keep cutting you off and I feel bad about it. But every time Harrison Ford shoots someone, they play this like super dramatic, like uh, patriotic thing. Yes. It's like fucking insane. Like they're just short of just playing Hail to the Chief every time he murks someone. <laughs> and uh, everybody's Glenn... like, yeah! Every time he kills somebody, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Glenn, Glenn Close rips up the uh, the letter giving her power. Uh, everybody at the at the White House is just throwing their throwing their files of whatever in the air. Oh there's yeah, like they're a, there's full a on, scene, like, Super Bowl party. Well, yeah, there's a scene like um oh, what's that movie that starts with all that spinny camera? That's that's absolutely awful. The, the, the camera spins around like 14 times in the war room, like just to embrace this celebration. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe. Oh, it doesn't matter. It'll come to me in the middle of the night, and I'll scream. We're, it we're also, uh, again, Top Gun rules. We're full on going to war with Russia after this movie, despite <laughs> yeah. the, we're not Russia. We're going, we're going to war with Kazakhstan. <laughs> also, Russia. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, that's Air Force One. 
Irreversible. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. Yep, uh, it's just like Irreversible. Just like Irreversible. It's pretty much the same movie. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else we're going to talk about? I feel like we jumped in a lot on this. I feel like we kind of got off that. It just kind of ends. It doesn't even end with a stupid baseball joke or anything. It just cuts. Yeah. I was, I was really like, oh, that's hoping, it. I really hope it's like a dumb college football joke or something. Yeah, I was hoping to be like, where's the, can we get Michigan on this thing? Like, as he's on this, like, C-130 or something. I yeah, Elvis funny. Gerback is waiting for him in full <laughs> Michigan uniform. It's <laughs> 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 just a pitch shift version of his Marge. We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we thought we'd finish the game for you here, sir, and then they play <laughs> fucking <laughs> play Wisconsin on the White House lawn. <laughs> He that offers his be- wife hockey tickets, and she's like, I like baseball. And then the movie's <laughs> over. But she's black now for some reason. Yeah, and now his wife is Halle Berry. I've been talking about how annoying his daughter was the whole thing. I, I, Why didn't I was, you let me see the refugees, you asshole? I was yeah. hoping that she was going to get murked. Like, she was just fucking obnoxious. Also, like, I, I looked up her IMDb, and she was in, like, three other movies. <laughs> she didn't, her career didn't really pan out after this. Um, ah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's get into Five Knuckle Shuffles. This is going to be interesting. Dude, really. Um, Sean. Uh, I low-key love this movie. I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah, I thought uh, you, you, were, you were trashing it. I was worried you were going to go, Whoa, No, it's that. dumb as fuck. It's but, so like, I, I'm... I'm gonna. Um, it, I feel like it leans into how stupid it is. One, Harrison Ford is like so spectacularly, perfectly, and miscast. Reason, like, oh, fucking gun, goddamn, I don't know. I'm the president. Just trace, trace the call. Just trace the call. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's besides the first, I don't know, twenty minutes or so of all the setup. I wasn't bored at all, which counts for a lot these days. Like mm-hmm. I actually watched the entire movie. So based, and then the third act is so patently absurd. Like, like, like it's like a Tim and Eric movie almost at the end. Like it's ridiculous or like a fast and furious, like prototype movie. So like I'm into that. Um, so Gary Oldman's great. They kill a whole, this movie's violent as shit. Gary Oldman like, kills so many people in the movie. Like they, they even have the Hans booby scene in the movie with that one guy's like, Hey, these guys, they have to call me to get something done. You want to get something done, you talk to me. And it's like, he just shoots him in the head. He's like, he was a good negotiator. He bought you another 30 minutes. Yeah, that shit was awesome. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a Die Hard on a plane, or it's Die Hard 2. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's a much better version of the last movie we watched. So, yeah, it's a 7. Like, I think if Kurt Russell was in it, it might be like an 8, because he'd be funny sometimes. The movie could stand for a few more jokes, honestly, for this type of movie. I'm not saying like it, it should be like a fucking slapstick comedy, but um, yeah, I, it was, it's totally watchable. Seven. Uh, Gogs. Uh, so I think it's I think it ends up being a six. Oh, it's it, not bad. It's it's, 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 it's an it's an Honestly, it was an eight until Gary Oldman died. And then once Gary Oldman died, it's a four. So I'll meet you in the I'll meet you in the middle and they'll give you a six. Guys. What? Only like ten more minutes of movie after he died. There's like thirty more minutes of movie after Gary Oldman. There is like a half an hour left. It is is insufferable after Gary Oldman. Really? Like I thought that's like the wackiest shit happened. So normally so don't get me wrong, I like wacky shit, but the movie wasn't wacky shit to start with. Oh, it was too and jarring. Then, and then like all of a sudden ship. it becomes stupid town. Like it got real dumb <laughs> in, exponentially. Like just like it went from, it just went super dumb. <laughs> like I liked Gary Oldman murder chair where he's just going to bring people up and zap them. Like, okay, I'm cool with it. I like get off my plate. And then the movie, you know, fucking Gary Oldman gets caught. The secret service agent. I don't know why I'm harping on it, but it bothers the fuck out of me that I don't understand why he did what he did. And, and then he just, the whole time he's there, his character makes no sense. Like he could completely be undoing everything, and he just doesn't. But like, whatever. Gary Oldman's amazing in it. I fucking love him. He's like, he's a tremendous bad guy. Um, all the Russian dudes are pretty good. Like, 
I, I I dig the movie. I like that they kind of subvert expectations because it's not about getting the football and the nuclear codes. They don't give a shit about they that. Do talk about it a little. Yeah, but it's like immediately like taken off the board. It's like don't worry about. It. That's not what this movie's about. Yeah, it's it's an interesting kind of uh, uh, thing because like as far as Gary Oldman knows, he has succeeded before mm. he dies, which is right. unusual for this kind of movie. Yeah, like I like I like. But there's like like once he's dead, like I don't. All of a sudden, we're back to, uh, hey Halle Berry, how do I land this plane? And then it just gets dumber. And then like when the jet takes one for the team, and like and like does you know he, he fucking does the bodyguard like hey, bye, bye. that was fucking so dumb. I know. <laughs> and, I, and I don't want to repeat myself, but that scene happened twice in yeah, yeah. No, no, right. It's just like, like in case you didn't get it the first time. <laughs> right. Like it's just no. So like I'm saying, it was it was an eight, Gary Oldman dies, it's a four, I'll meet you in the middle and call it a six. It's better than the executive decision because it has it's not just like five dudes and a crippled guy sitting in the underbelly of a plane whispering for forty five minutes. Like it's got yeah. like like Fucking uh, Harrison Ford's doing shit, and fucking uh, Gary Oldman's doing shit. Like stuffs, it like stakes are high. I'm into it, but like once he's gone, I'm out. That's crazy. I had the, the exact opposite reaction. It was like a five up until like it went to fucking Looney Tunes. Alec, uh, it's it's like an eight. Like I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, it was yeah. much better than I was expecting it to be. Uh, I thought Harrison Ford was like for his disinterested ass was still pretty good as the president. <laughs> like for when clearly he didn't give a shit. Um, do, do you think the movie uh, does better in your eyes because how bad the similar movie we was watched last week was? I mean, probably that. Prob that has to have some kind of some kind of effect on it. Like we watched basically the same thing a week ago and it was terrible. It was boring. Like nothing happened. No stakes. No, hey. no president. <laughs> um, no president. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. No stakes. No president. What kind of movie is this? Um. Yeah. I I thought it was fun. Gary Oldman's really good. Uh, the president's really good. Or uh, the president Harrison Ford's really good. <laughs> president Ford. Um. Gerald you like Ford. nachos? <laughs> Do you like yes, football? Mr. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the performances in the movie were all either competent or hilarious, and <laughs> I liked them all. Nothing like I don't think there was anything boring about this movie. It was wild. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to uh, to add. This movie made. Three hundred million dollars worldwide on a budget. Eighty-five. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fucking certified Damn. banger. Damn, that was a huge hit. I didn't know it was such a big hit. Yeah, it was. Uh, it made like one hundred and eighty million in the U.S. and then three fifteen worldwide in Kazakhstan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just They're cut like, off the last half gonna... an hour. <laughs> we're, we're gonna... <laughs> 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 that... I wish that were true. That would be <laughs> um, uh, who's left? TJ. It's an eight for me, dog. I really enjoyed this movie. I, I can't lie. I, 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 I think, uh, I think Sean said it uh, just a few minutes ago, but like, I was never bored. And I think that brings with it like a whole different metric now because of so many movies we watch. I'm just done. Like, five minutes into this movie. And this movie kept my interest going. I thought that um, it took it took the Die Hard on a Plane thing in the best possible way. It kept coming up with interesting scenarios for the characters to figure out. I thought Gary Oldman was fantastic. And Gary Oldman made the movie. I thought he was so good. Um, and he's also ultimately one of the villains that I identify with. You know, it's one of those Magneto situations. Um, leftist politics aside, I I thought Harrison Ford was good. I thought that the action sequences were done really well, even though they're like filled with like bad CGI. Like, 
I, it, it's an old movie. It's, it's the, the water landing of Air Force One is like a left behind movie. It is incredibly <laughs> bad. <laughs> and the the, uh, the fuel plane explodes. It looks terrible. But like the concept of that sequence is really good. Like that, like the the fueling going wrong, and then they can't like get the plane right, and then the fire goes up the fuel line, and then the thing explodes. That shit's fucking awesome. Like that was great, Die Hard two, basically. Yeah. Great sequence. And like, and I know again, like I give it a pass for its terrible effects because it, this movie is so fucking old. But I thought the sequence itself was really good. I, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with this movie. I really did. I enjoyed, enjoyed it quite a bit. So that's an eight for me, though. So that's Air Force One stumping in Air Force One. Big bump. Are you going to put that? Can that be the? Is that the bumper at the end of the. Yeah. Uh, so next week is my birthday pick, and it's Battle Royal 2. Oh, yeah. Movie that we've talked about, and Sean and I have really brought it up on the show a couple of times. It's a movie I defend quite a bit, so it's going to be interesting. Will we think you have to defend it because that movie rules. Will my opinion change? I haven't watched it in a few years. Will my opinion change or will it stay the same? I contest the Battle Royal 2 is one of the best sequels ever made. I, I love it. Think, I think Battle Royal 2 I like better than Battle Royal, honestly. I agree with that. But I will watch both back to back. To uh, we can have that discussion next week. So I'm very excited to watch <laughs> those movies because uh, I love both of those. I love. I mean, Battle Royal One is so fucking good. I've been a big fan of Battle Royal Two ever since it came out. I've been defending Battle that movie since its release. Battle Royal Two is incredibly violent. Like, <laughs> and it's also like incredibly anti-American, which I think yeah. is one of the reasons that people hate it so much. To be perfectly honest. It came out a year after 9-11, and it basically is saying 9-11 is America's fault. <laughs> it's a very unpopular message to come out with. <laughs> Old strategy, uh, Cotton. See how it works I out. I mean, that, that really is, the, I, I don't know. It's one of those things where people write it off. Well, we'll talk about it. I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to hear what you guys think of it. Alec, have you watched Battle Royale 1 or 2? I've seen the first one. I've not seen the second one. Did you watch the first one? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's it like scratches an itch for you because you like you like hyperized, hyper hyper stylized teenage drama. And I feel like it's that's a, not a it's a good uh, it's a good rip off of the Hunger Games. <laughs> Did you ever read uh, that Avengers Academy book where yeah. they like that was really? Good. I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but I saw Battle Royal for the first time on a really weird date with a really weird woman in Baltimore that picked that as the movie to watch at her house. Oh. And then I was sucking on her titties and her roommate came home <laughs> and it just blew up the whole spot. <laughs> I, I was, uh, to quote the bard, sucking on her titties like she wanted me. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, that's the show. We'll see you next week. Uh, and uh, keep uh, Mega Mix and keep Power Jam. Shaking those vaginas. Uh, bye. Bye bye. bye.